Hey guys, it's Julie, and today I'm super excited to be showing you how to make Sophie style sounds. So, I made a few videos about making Sophie synths and about making Sophie snares, but I've never talked about the other stuff like the vocals and like some of those harder kicks like she has, and yeah, pretty much just that kind of stuff actually. But today I wanted to make a video showing you how to do that because I think there's some very interesting things in the technique behind these sounds, and hopefully, you can benefit from it. Have here is the kick, which sounds like this. So this is comprised of two layers. Basically, we have sort of like the punchy, like impact part of the kick, and then we have the bass part of the kick. So for the punchy kick, all it is is just like a simple kick sample. Really, any kick can work. You just don't want it to have like a super hard hitting sort of transient. Like you, if you look at this one, you can see like obviously there's a transient there that you can clearly see, and this is a pretty hard hitting kick, but it's more of like a thumpy kick. Like it's not so much got like that clicky kind of like EDM kick sound. So the key is just to find a really hard hitting kick that's more thumpy like this. Like even like a trap kick would probably work. Just something that isn't, like I said, just like clicky high end. And then for the bass layer, I made that with Serum. So I usually try to use Ableton stuff only for these tutorials so everybody can use the project files and can hopefully learn from it. But in this case, I kind of needed to use Serum because there's just kind of a bit of complex stuff going on in here. So basically what we have is I have this patch that I've made using a bit of FM synthesis and then some like cool filtering and then some stuff in the effects tab. So the first thing we got here is a square wave and I've just got a little bit of unison on that. Um, you can see, yeah, I've just got that pretty much set. Normally, this is sort of like the main thing that you're hearing. And then what I've got on that is I've got some FM from B, you can see that's being modulated with this one, I believe. No, that's being modulated with the macro, ah, yes. So basically what I have is I have some FM from B going on there. And then what's happening is when this macro automates up, you can see, yeah, you can see like, that's when that FM comes in for those kind of like insane sounds. So that's kind of nice to get those sounds where it's like kind of warping and like really, yeah, just sort of intense like that, I guess is the best way I could put it, is using some FM. Like, like I said, automating that, and there's other things that are being automated by that macro, but yeah, just having that kind of, FM automation there is probably like the main thing besides this comb filter which I'll talk about in a sec that's making it really like sound so like powerful there and that automates up and it's a cool way to kind of make your sound sound like it's like evolving if that makes any sense like it can be kind of hard I know when you're synthesizing sounds to give them sort of like an organic way to make it go to like the next level or like the next place I guess I could say like like I said, how that is evolving, basically. And that's a really good way to do it. Like, with some simple FM, you can really do cool stuff with that. So then, for the second oscillator here, I've got another square wave. You can see I've got it detuned a little bit. And then I've got, yeah, that's just playing normally. And then you can see I have the sync, which is also routed to this macro. Um, so then that's just automating up for that part. Um, so then I have those both going into this comb filter here, which is just set like this. It's actually not playing until that little part where you can see the macro is automating the mix up. So as you can see, macros are a really, really good way to make such like detailed kind of sounds like this because it allows you to automate so many things at once and you can just get more creative if you're just sort of like, you know, dragging and dropping that onto these knobs and then just automating one thing as opposed to sitting there and like automating each of these three different parameters will be a little bit weird. So the only other thing that's going, or a little bit difficult, so then the only other thing that's going on in there is you can see I have this LFO 2 on the pitches of these two oscillators. So you can hear that's what gives it like that. That kind of like hit at the start. So yeah, that's it for the oscillator tab. Then in the effects what I have here is actually pretty simple. Basically I just have some distortion. And then I have this low pass here, which is being modulated with this envelope. So these two are very important. If I turn them off, you can hear. Kind of just like this weird, 
like square stab thing. Um, so definitely, like I said, like the distortion is just kind of blowing it out and giving it that more like raw textured sound. And then the filter, that's what really makes this sound like a kick. Like that filter going down there with the envelope one. Yeah, I guess that's what really gives it that like proper impact. This is kind of a nice technique. Like if you want to make these sort of metallic bass sounds, try making just like a really like juicy square or saw wave sound like this with some FM. And then just at the end of the chain, put the filter with the envelope on it. And you get like that nice kind of like smooth decay on it. So then for effects on that, I've got a little bit of grain delay here. You can see it's just kind of set like this. I believe this is a preset actually, but I know that I played with it. Um, excuse me. So basically, yeah, like, I'll show you what it sounds like without it. So you can hear it's giving it that sort of like chorusy, washed out kind of effect. So this is really popular in Sophie's music. I'm not sure if she's using a grain delay to get this kind of effect. But these kind of like metallic effects are really important because you can hear like this takes this from just like a square wave with a bit of distortion and a pitch envelope to like this really cool kind of like metallic sound. So the key here is just the, with the time you, and the dry wet. So you can see I only have the dry wet at 45% and then the time is so quick. So it's doing a delay, but because it's so fast, that's what gives it like that kind of metallic sound. And then the spray here is kind of what makes it have that like grain delay kind of sound. Yeah, you can hear when I bring that in, that's what brings in the sort of like, the best way I can describe it is like uneasiness. Like if you had to describe the sound, it just sounds kind of uneasy. Like it's just, yeah, it's just like kind of brutal like that. So then, the only other effects I have on there is an EQ8 or R. This EQ R is, who knows grammar, but this is EQ8 <laughs> with a bit of a high boost here. So you can see, yeah, just bringing up the high end a bit. Here's what it sounds like without it. It just kind of gives it more clarity or like more air or presence, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then finally after that, I just have a compressor side chaining it to that punchy kick that you heard. So this is really subtle. You can see it's not activating that much. Basically, if you don't know how this works, this green line here, where that peaks is basically where the compression will activate. So if I turn this down, like anywhere in here, it's not doing anything. So then if I just bring it slightly down below that, you can hear it starts kicking in, but it's not too much. I still want to have like a, most of this sound, but it just was getting in the way of the kick a little bit too much without any side chaining. And I think that's a really key element to make these two sound like one one sound. Like the goal here is not to make it sound like there's a kick and a bass playing. The goal is to just make it sound like the kick is the bass. And this is definitely, yeah, a really good way to achieve that. Then the next thing that I have here are these vocals, which sound like this. I want your body. Everybody wants your body. So I was trying to make those kind of like, I guess you would also say like uneasy, sort of like just dark, heavy vocals. Like you hear in tracks like Pony Boy and Face Shopping, where Sophie just takes them and just really like warps them and makes them sound so like digital and not in a bad way, like digital in a really cool way, but yeah, just like so just just sort of textured, I guess you would say. And so the way that I did this was by taking this acapella, and this is part of the reason why this project file is free, because this is the acapella from Jack by Breach. So if I play you, yeah, if I turn off these effects, and I pitch it back up, you'll hear. I want your body. Yeah, so there's that. I want your body. Everybody wants your bodies. That track, you probably heard it if you've heard any house music before. But yeah, so I basically just taken that vocal. And I thought that was a good one for this. It's saying, like, I want your body. It kind of has, like, that similar, like, creepy vibe to a lot of Sophie tracks, I guess. This sounds so much like I'm insulting Sophie, but I'm really not trying to. I think her music is amazing. But it does have an uneasy feeling to it. But yeah, so basically, the way that I did it was I took that. I also took this part over here, which is just another part of the acapella. Everybody wants your And then, as you can hear when that last one played, I just pitched it down minus six semitones and then an octave. So just minus 18, basically. And yeah, that's what it sounded like. And then what I did was I put that through some grain delay, which sounds like this. I want your body. 
So that's what's giving it that kind of weird, like, chorusy, big effect, I guess you would say. And the way that I'm using this one is a little bit more intense than I was using it on the kick. So what I have here, as you can see, I've got the dry wet all the way up. And then just like with the kick, I've got a really fast time. So this isn't really changing the timing of the sound, even though it is 100% wet. Like, it's still hitting on the count that you see it hitting on and you, you want it to hit on. But, yeah, this is just giving it, like, that sort of metallic, like, sort of grainy effect, I guess you would say. And the way that I'm doing it is with the spray mostly. So, like I said, it's just a really fast delay. And then by turning this pitch up an octave and then turning the spray up, that's what gives you that kind of, like, chorusy effect. If I turn it off, you can hear it. It's still kind of cool. But yeah, then I just turn that up and then bringing the spray in. It's how you can really make it sound like. Yeah, just sort of big like that. So this is really simple. I mean, the main thing with these are, like I said, just sort of pitching them down and then putting them through the grain delay. Like it's really nothing too much else to it other than that. You kind of just have to get in and start experimenting. Um, So then after that, I just have this EQ8, which is pretty straightforward. It's just cutting out some low end and then cutting a little bit around like 200 to 250 hertz and then I boost a little bit of high end as well at the end there so You can hear I'm just kind of shaping it a little bit more and making it fit in with the track this bass has a lot Around like this range. So that was why I kind of cut that out on these vocals And yeah, like I said these vocals really aren't too difficult It's just it can be a little bit weird to understand when you first hear it I think but again if you just get like some vocals like you can take like anything like this is kind of someone speaking I, mean, I guess it's sort of singing whatever you would call it but like yeah this is a really simple sample and i just took it and with effects made it have that like really cool sophie vibe so that's pretty much it for this video the only other thing we have in here is the snare which is actually a sample from one of my older tutorials that i made on how to make sophie snares like i said in this one i just wanted to cover stuff that hasn't been covered yet so that's why I'm not really talking about this one, but I will link this tutorial in the description if you want to go check it out. So go check that out. Um, and yeah, so that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Once again, you can get the project file and samples and all the stuff in here in the description for free. So make sure you go check that out. If you're a patron on my Patreon, also check there because they will be available without a download gate. Thank you again, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another tutorial.